January 14th. And could we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will start with adjustments to our agenda. Does anyone have any adjustments? No? Then we can move forward. Um, to the approval of the December school board meetings, are there any comments or questions on the minutes from the last meeting? No, there are not. Um, so we will move to comments from the high school students, Hillary and Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> Hillary couldn't make it. She's sick today, actually. Um, let's see. Everything's going pretty well at the high school. Um, it seems like the uh, drug uh, drinking policy is kind of taking into effect, and kids have more of an understanding. It's less of a problem now than it was. Um, cool. I'll talk about athletics. Swim teams are both doing well, girls and boys. Um, track team is doing very well. I saw them working out in the swimming pool. So, <laughs> basketball team is doing excellent, um, and hockey is doing great. So, I suppose there's no problems with the sports. Everything's competing. Everyone's competing at a high level, and as you know, a lot of kids compete in the sports. So, it's going very well. And we're all preparing for our championships in a couple weeks. And uh, let's see, some of the stuff the SAC wanted me to go over. They said a heart the raffle, raffles that I talked about last time was for the Tibetan um, school in India. Um, they just sent away their funds and they collected over a thousand dollars so we're very proud of that and that kind of showed how the high school and kids from the high school show respect for other societies and can you know share and give which is I think is very good. The junior class is busy planning for the problem that we're gonna have this year so it's probably gonna be I don't know maybe at the pavilion somewhere else. I was hoping Hillary could talk about that but there's plenty of time to talk about that. And uh, seems like everything's going very well at the high school. <laughs> Any questions? No questions? Okay, that's sure. it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, now we can hear from the middle school, Elise and Elise. Hi, I'm Elise Winnie Roberts. And I'm Elise Maloney. Um, the fifth grade has just welcomed back Mrs. Hawks today. Her husband and her have a new son now named Jackson. Everything's going smoothly except that um, they still have recess in the winter, so they want me to remind everyone to dress appropriately. <laughs> um, in sixth grade, all is well. Not much is going on except for there's a roller skating social at Happy Wheels on January 22nd, and it's also on January 21st for the fifth graders. Um, in the seventh grade, um, not much is going on, except basically they said that they've been doing a lot with their laptops, obviously. Um, some of the stuff that they've been doing recently is um, slideshows for science on cells and plate, te plate tectonics. Um, in the eighth grade, um, February 27th, um, is the National Spanish Exam, where um, the top 20 students with the highest test averages will be taking a test um, to see how they compare to the rest of the students in Maine. And um, also today, all the eighth graders took their um, high school foreign language um, placement tests. Okay, um, the dance is coming up on February 7th, and it's Valentine's Day theme. <coughs> And we usually um, sell carnations at the dance, but this became a problem because some girls got carnations and some girls didn't. And so we thought about this and we decided that at the door we'll pass out a carnation to every girl so everyone feels included. And we'll, so the guys don't feel left out, we'll give them a Hershey kiss. Um, for sports, um, uh, girls basketball ended yesterday with their last game. And the... Uh, uh, eighth graders ended with a 12 and 13 record, and the seventh graders um, were not successful. But and boys had tryouts last week, and they have their first game on Thursday. And Nordic is underway, and they've had three races. 
And um, as we reported last month, um, uh, the student council adopted a family for the holidays, and we ended up going present shopping and food shopping, and we wrapped them all and ended up um, bringing them to the family, and that turned out really well. Any questions? No okay, questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we'll move on to communications. Um, and I have two things. First, a reminder um, for the school board, for the fifth grade video conference tomorrow morning, which will be in Jill Bell's classroom from 10.30 to 11 o'clock, and she has invited us all to attend. Um, and secondly, in our packet, um, there was a note from Gail Schmader from Volunteer Services on our mentor and tutor program. And I'd just like to acknowledge um, the, the great work that the high school students are doing um, in tutoring math at the middle school and working with Pond Cove students, um, spending time with them, and um, working through community services on the Shawnee Peak trips and after-school activities through our escapade program. It's wonderful that we have high school students that take their time, spend their time with um, all of the Pine Cove and middle school students. Next, we can move to comments. Oh, Marie, I'm sorry. I've got a quick one. I don't really know that this falls on the communications, and I'm probably stealing some of Principal Eismeyer's fire. But back in uh, the early part of December, I was invited to participate in a third grade sort of civics type of day where I got to visit with every single third grade class and explain to them or try to explain to them my role on the school board and what the school board does. Um, I told some of those classes, and I would go on record now, that when I'm in a kind of sad mood, third grade or anywhere in Pond Cove is a good place to visit. The energy there is just astounding. Uh, the kids are so well behaved for that age, it's unbelievable, and their questions are rather uh, incisive, to say the least. Uh, I'll tell you all in executive session some of the questions <laughs> that were asked. But uh, I, I do hope that I will be on the invite list again, Tom. Thank you. Any other communications? I'm sorry, from anyone? Okay. Um, comments from the public? Do we have any tonight? No. Um, next, we move on to uh, recognition for a teacher, Allison Coulter, who is a Spanish teacher in our high school and is the first teacher in our district to achieve national board certification. The school board um, over the last several years has taken time out of their meetings to recognize accomplishments of students, staff, community members, all those that contribute in some way or have um, stood out among the rest. National board certification is something that we have not had uh, many of our teachers get involved with, but just um, to tell you a little bit about, about what it is. Um, and I'll just read from, from a, a brochure that the organization puts out. A national board certification uh, offered by MBPTS is a demonstration of a candidate's teaching practice as measured against high and rigorous standards. It is a symbol of commitment to excellence in teaching. When a teacher achieves national board certificate, it's a credential attesting to the fact a teacher has been assessed by his or her peers as one who has accomplished makes sound professional judgments about student learning and acts effectively with those judgments. We're very fortunate to have one of our teachers and who was a teacher here for her first year um, achieve national, national board certification. So we'd like to present um, this certificate for outstanding accomplishment to Allison Coulter in recognition of your successful completion of the requirements for national board certification. 
Through this accomplishment, you serve as a positive role model, not only for your students, but for the entire Cape Elizabeth School community. In appreciation for the Cape Elizabeth School Board, signed Marie Praker, School Board Chair Thomas Fasella, Superintendent of Schools. Thank you so much. Um, I spent about a year working on this sort of in a vacuum, so it feels pretty nice to be recognized in public for it. Um, more importantly, I think it says quite a bit about the Cape Elizabeth school system and the value that they place on teaching and learning um, by taking the time to recognize teachers for the accomplishments that they make. Um, so it's a being recognized is a great motivator. So I guess just on behalf of all the teachers that are motivated by recognition and the students who ultimately benefit, I just want to thank you very much. And now we can move on to the superintendent's report. Um, the first item I would uh, like to, to mention is um, that the Cape Elizabeth School Board will be participating um, in a NESDEC study, which is the um, New England School Development Education Council. This is an, a very old organization that's been around for over 50 years, originated at Harvard, um, and really uh, focuses in on uh, teaching and learning and specifically professional development. Um, they do an awful lot of research and they have two of their researchers that have been an awarded a $40,000 grant from the Wallace Reader's Digest Corporation uh, to take a look at school boards and specifically in this particular aspect of their study, um, what attracts outstanding individuals um, to become involved with school boards and then to, to stay in those positions. Um, they surveyed um, different educational leaders in all the New England states. Um, they spoke to more than likely in this state probably um, main school management, um, people from the State Department of Education to find out if, if there were a school board that, that uh, is known for keeping high quality people what would it be and from, list, from talking to the people who will be doing the research, uh, Cape Elizabeth came up more often than any other school board. So I think it's an honor to, to be selected, um, but I also think it's an opportunity to take a look at what it means to be on a school board um, and how important it is to um, have people remain on school boards so there isn't that constant turnover and then just what interests school boards and, and individuals in being involved in this kind of work uh, that is so important. And hopefully from their research, they'll be able to share the insights they receive from, from their conversations with you and other uh, school boards throughout New England. As of this point, uh, there only have been four school uh, towns selected. Uh, one is Wayland, uh, Massachusetts. One is Farmington, Connecticut. And the other one is Barrington, Rhode Island. Um, they are looking for uh, to urban areas, I guess, also to, to make it more of a uh, uh, well-rounded group and representing different kinds of school systems. So I think it's an honor, but it's also an opportunity, I think, to learn um, about, about ourselves as a, and, and, and for all of you to learn about yourself as a school board. And again, as we do, as we work with teachers, that constant uh, desire to improve and, and, and get better. Um, the next item under my report um, just a uh, notification, um, Carmen Molito, who has been an administrator in the district for, for several years now, uh, will be retiring uh, at the end of this, this school year. This is something that, that Carmen notified, of, notified us of informally um, uh, about a year and a half ago, um, but has submitted his letter of resignation um, to begin effective June 30th. And also the notification in, in your packet uh, that I wanted to remind you of, speaking of retaining good school board members um, of the uh, municipal election in May, 
and those of you that are up for re-election. Um, and I think we have three school board members who have to answer that question. And lastly, not on, uh, under my report, but I would like to mention, because it came up at the last meeting, there was a discussion about the high school traffic issue and a suggestion that a meeting take place uh, with Mike McGovern and possibly Neil Williams. Uh, Mike, uh, Neil, and I uh, met um, last week, uh, discussed the issue. Um, the course of action we decided to take would be to, to form a committee that would include uh, two school board members, two town councilors, um, a parent, um, uh, the chief of police, myself, um, to define what the issue is and, and prioritize some of those, the pieces of that traffic issue, and then to come up with a recommendation that the committee would bring to the town council. So that will be happening in the next couple of weeks. And anyone who would like to serve on that committee, um, you know, let Mary, she's the hands fly up on this one. Uh, I saw two of them. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have Kathy and, and yes. Kevin. Okay. I do. Um, and hopefully we'll come up with, uh, even in our small meeting that we had, came up with, um, I think, already a list of seven or eight possibilities. Um, but I think it's important to, to take a look at this just from a safety viewpoint of what's going on at the high school as far as traffic is concerned. That's it. Then we can move on to the principal's reports. Jeff, high school. I have just a, a few things today. Um, first, as you know, because I try to repeat it as often as I can whenever I get a chance to speak in the podium here, um, this year's eighth, grade, eighth graders will be faced with a new graduation requirement. Um, as a result of a change in Maine law, our eighth graders will need to satisfy Maine's learning results in addition to earning the credits that we as a school district require for graduation. And our teachers have been working very hard this year on developing um, a set of common assessments that will be an important part in measuring student progress towards the standards. And I just want to let the board know that next week after, after midterms, uh, a group of teachers um, with school administrators um, and David Roof from the Southern Maine Partnership and Sarah Simmons uh, will be sitting down to consider some of the big picture questions, and these are really big questions, uh, that the learning results present to every school district. And just to bullet them quickly, I'm not going to talk about any of them uh, in any detail, uh, but here they are. Um, supporting students who we know and can predict will struggle uh, with attaining those learning results. Um, how do we change report cards so that parents are kept informed on an ongoing basis how their kids are making progress or not making progress uh, <coughs> towards what they will be required to demonstrate? Um, how do we manage the voluminous data that's going to come out of uh, an assessment system that is much more refined and defined um, than has been typically true in, in schools uh, across America? Documenting our assessments. Um, developing individual teacher assessments as part of a comprehensive local assessment system. Right now, what our teachers have been working on is common assessments that they will all be using, and those are core pieces of a comprehensive local assessment system. But another very important piece is individual teacher assessments that will meet the technical standards of validity and reliability that the state requires in order for a quiz or a test or a paper or a project to be, con to be counted as part of the assessment system that we're relying on. Um, graduation um, and the issue of al alternate diplomas, is it something that ought to be considered, not considered? There's a lot of confusion about whether it's even permitted um, and ambiguity in the law. Um, and whether or not we decide to include any standardized assessments in our comprehensive local assessment system. Those are all huge questions, and we're going to be starting to, to, to try to answer those questions um, at a meeting that will happen next week. Um, and that will be the first of several meetings that we'll be holding to, to really try to define things. Um, and we do look forward to beginning to tackle them. Um, as, I, as I've said to the board in the past, I think one of the great things about, I think there, there are a lot of things about which all of us can justifiably have reservations about what we're being asked to do. It's an awful lot of work in a short amount of time. I do think one of the best things about it is the, is the discussion that it sparks among teachers the collaboration that it sparks among teachers, um, 
is, and, and which will lead, I believe, to improved instruct, instruction as they look at student results and figure out we did this well or did this poorly. But there, but there are a lot of things that, that, that go along with that. The second thing I wanted to do is, is and this is to sort of whet the board's appetite if you're interested. Um, last year, uh, there were a couple of presentations I made and then a, at a board workshop, a presentation that uh, science teachers made, Michael Efren made, particularly about the changes to the science curriculum. Um, and if at a later time the board would like to have uh, Michael and or other members of the science department come forward and report on the work that they've been doing this year as they revamp, revamp the science curriculum, uh, they'd be more than happy to do that. Um, last week, um, and in, in our ninth grade, ninth grade college prep physics classes, um, Michael O'Brien and Michael Efren um, is, uh, tried out uh, a new project which was related to the issue of the calculation of pressure um, and the dissemination of the physical concept of pressure. Um, and this particular project was the brainchild of Michael O'Brien, who's another one of our new teachers. Um, and Michael Efren joined in on that project. Um, and I wanted to just show you some pictures of it um, and to give you a copy of the actual assignment. And basically what the assignment was, is, well, let me pass it out. It had to do with, um, it, the challenge was for students to be able to walk across eggs without cracking them by walking across them in shoes that they, would, they were designed. And this is, this is the assignment uh, that the two Michaels um, gave the kids in their classes. And as you will see, I'm not going to go through it in detail because I know my time is very limited. Uh, there were several parts to it. One was to look at a shoe. They actually cut, um, took a, cut actual running shoes and sort of had students identify the various layers that went into a running shoe and speculate about what the various purposes of it was, of each of those layers was. Um, and then they had to design a shoe, which they then had to calculate the pressure that an individual egg could withstand uh, before it cracked. Um, these are not hard-boiled eggs. These are, these are eggs, um, brown eggs and white eggs, um, both. <laughs> and so they calculated the pressure individual eggs could withstand. And then the challenge was um, to design a shoe um, that was not made out of metal, not made out of wood, um, entirely of their own construction that would withstand the pressure of students walking across cartons of eggs. Um, and then they had to, their, their other task was to create a brochure that they could then use to sell these shoes as if they were actually shoes that, that, that were being created. And all the things that they did had to also explain the physics behind um, the theory of the particular shoes they designed and what actually happened when they actually walked across the eggs. Neither of the Michaels had ever experimented with this before and they had no idea what was going to happen. So they had bought, I guess, a lot of eggs uh, just in case. But they actually needed many fewer than they expected to need. To expected, uh, to need. Um, and I just brought along some pictures um, and the board can just, I'm not gonna go through them in detail. My personal favorite is that there was a group of students um, who created a, a shoe which they called the loafers. Um, and there's a picture in here. The picture's a little bit dark, but there's a picture in here that shows, number one, students having a good time, um, studying some serious concepts about pressure, but doing it in a way that's very engaging to them. And what the loafers did is they actually took loaves of bread, um, and that was the bottom of the shoe, and then they constructed something which held the shoe on their feet so that it was a shoe, and they literally walked across what, Mike, what the two Michaels did is they had cartons of eggs which were open and the, the, the particular student who was part of the group who was the walker had to walk across the cartons of eggs. Um, and what they found, it was important to have a shoe that was large enough, as I understand it, to disseminate the force across, across a number of eggs together, but not so large that they would lose their balance because when they lost their balance, the pressure tended to concentrate on one or more of the poor eggs which cracked. But they said that they lost many fewer eggs than they expected to lose during the course of this experiment. Um, so I'll pass these pictures around um, and maybe I'll start a few at either end and you can pass them around. If you would like the science teachers to come, come at a later meeting to talk about the things that they've done. Um, you don't have to make shoes though, right? You don't have to make shoes. <coughs> And 
and I think a, a tremendously creative um, approach to teaching physics and an important concept. The last thing I really wanted to do is to add my own congratulations to Alison Coulter. Um, it truly is because I have seen the, no, the, the voluminous documentation that teachers applying for national board certification have to go through in order to even be considered. Um, and my understanding is that out of quite a few applications for national board certification that came from Maine last year, Allison was one of the few whose applications was accepted. I don't know exactly what the percentage was, but it really is a tremendous amount of work. So I just wanted to add my congratulations. Any questions? Thank you. Um, Jeff, I think that if everyone agrees, we would love to hear from the science department, um, especially after all of the changes that we've made, and to hear from them what their progress is this year. We would love to. Okay. I'll talk with Tom and we can okay. figure out a time. And now we'll move on to the middle school, Nancy. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, first, I'd like to also add my congratulations to Allison and also share that I had the opportunity to host the Colleague Cafe when she presented the National um, Board Certification to interested teachers. She did a great job presenting that, and several of her colleagues here in Cape Elizabeth were interested, and I know a few people weren't able to come that afternoon, but we videotaped it, or we attempted to anyway. I think we got most of it on the tape um, so that they could watch it, and it is quite a process, but um, Allison is certainly a great um, advertiser for that process and the professionalism that it brings to someone. So, Allison, once again, congratulations. Also, I'd just like to say, commenting on the physics class, I wish my physics class had been that interesting. I would have, I'm not sure that the shoes I designed would have worked, but I would have had a wonderful time trying to figure that out. Um, what a great problem. <clears throat> well, once again, I'm here after Elise and Elise have brought most of our news to you. Um, I just want you to know that when they tell you nothing much is going on, remember that the kid report <laughs> kind of thing. But they do a great job. In your packet, you also have received an invitation from Gail Schmader about our career fair coming up next week on the 23rd. Once again, we have a number of community residents that are going to give of their time to share with our 7th and 8th graders. Um, this will be our sixth career fair, and really looking forward to it. I do want to publicly thank Gail Schmader and Kate Tebow, who have done a great job this year helping us get ready for that. So um, we thank them for all that extra effort. And we have just about everybody scheduled. I will tell um, the eighth graders, everybody goes to three sessions, and the eighth graders all got their first and second choices, and then one of their other choices as well, too. So we were able to match that very well, and we are in the process of scheduling our seventh graders. We had a little computer um, crash that we had to correct, but um, they'll be all set for the 23rd as well. On February 4th, I, I don't know if you'd like to participate in this or not, but um, we are doing auditions for our variety show. Um, it will be on February 4th, and I'm sure if you wanted to perform at all as a school board, uh, Mr. Wilbur would find a space for you on either our afternoon performance or the evening performance. Each year he invites me to perform. Um, he's got now into, <coughs> he has to teach with both John Casey and myself. He invites both of us to uh, perhaps do something together as a team. We graciously decline, and the entire audience always thanks us for that decline. So um, John and I will certainly understand if you choose not to audition either. Uh, speaking of auditions, next week we have our auditions for our play this year. And this year our play is a medley um, kind of thing, collection. Um, Steve, was not, Steve Price was not able to find exactly a play that was appropriate for middle school to sort of compete with Peter Pan and um, the Music Man and those kinds of things we've done in the recent past. But this will be a collection um, of a medley of different things with musicals with some small speaking parts, lots of opportunity once again for performers. And once again, he's being aided in that with a troop of people from the middle school and also our outstanding parent volunteers, um, led of course by Hilary Egan, who always does our band and is also going to help with all the collections of the songs that they do. Our production for that will be, or we are going to go once again with the weekend production on April 4th, 5th, and 6th with evening performances on Friday and Saturday and afternoon performances on Saturday and Sunday. That's a schedule we tried last year. It worked very well for us and did not interfere with as much schoolwork. Um, so we will be doing that. Also, we will be um, working with some parent volunteers um, to help cover in Steve's classroom. We have had some parent volunteers who work um, pretty much in the science community or related science community to um, 
come in and teach his classes and work with the students for the week of the production and that always that helped us out greatly last year and it's a nice way for um, not only some of our mothers to volunteer but also some of the fathers to volunteer as well too um, so we will be moving forward with that last week we began our conversations as we begin that transition to high school and I was talking with Elise and Elise before the meeting and they were wondering if it was time to tell you about some of the things they'd heard about um, for high school and we decided we'd wait a little bit until next meeting to tell you a little bit more but last week um, we had an afternoon where in their last classes um, the students had conversations with um, different personnel guidance and social worker personnel and high school students just about some of the challenges of being an eighth grader challenges about growth and development that sort of into they don't interfere but they influence um, how you make decisions how you plan how you begin to form your own independent identity away from your family but still connected to your family um, also some of the things that are transitions about you're leaving a school that you know and you're getting ready to go to a school you don't know as well. The high school seniors made a great analogy with that with their, in their own situation of moving to college away from a high school that they've known very well. And then they also talked about the third challenge was leadership as the oldest students in a school. They're often automatically looked upon as you must be the leaders and high school seniors find themselves in the same situation as well too. And the seniors helping us out with that were David Croft, Luke Holden, Ginny Wheel, um, Camille Earnshaw, and Derek Roy. And then helping us out with the presentation and all of these people I would say um, to you just very quickly, un unfortunately Rick Madden has had to be away from school. He would usually be very much involved in these things and with the career fair, but his wife is gravely ill and he needs to be with her. But because we are a school community, not only have people in the middle school step forward to help, but we've also received great help um, and great help in this project from Pam Vos, Bill Cook, Katie Lisa, Julie Salikas from our own staff, and also Belinda Snell. So I think that's something we can be proud of as a Cape Elizabeth School community too. We're still going to all work and do the things we need to to be in the right place for the students. So that was a nice casual beginning. Uh, we will get underway. I know Jeff's going to be sending a letter home to the eighth grade students when they take their progress reports home next week. And actually, even though it seems like it might be in the distance, um, high school is just a short ways away for those students. Any questions? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Panko, Tom. <clears throat> Good evening. I want to thank Kevin for recognizing uh, the work of the third <laughs> teachers and students. I think as part of that unit too in social studies and learning about the community, the third graders did a um, mock town meeting to uh, discuss and uh, resolve uh, a live problem here. I think Tom was fortunate enough to see that. It is outstanding work. It's, it's uh, very well done. Um, I'm sure you realize we've just about reached the halfway point of the school year and the teachers, <coughs> Conco teachers will be sending report cards home with students at the end of the month. And I thought it'd be a good time maybe to give you a report card on us and some of the goals we said we'll be looking at this year. Uh, one of them is a long-term goal is to make, I know it's a cliche, data-driven decisions about student progress and curriculum. But I'll give you one example of the progress I think we're making with that. I was at a team meeting today with the reading recovery teachers and grade one to talk about where grade one students are with their reading. And all of the discussion I heard was pegged to the observations and the assessments that the teachers had made um, in the classrooms. The discussion even reached forward to plans for communicating uh, that process and the results to the grade two teachers for next year so they could prepare for that. Grade two, incidentally, just finished a project to organize part of their storage room to serve as what we call a book room, to have leveled text organized three different ways. One of them was using the developmental reading assessment, which has, in effect, replaced the not so useful California achievement test. So we now have a series of instructionally appropriate material that the teachers have organized from our literacy work K through four. It's taken a long time, but we're finally there. And continue a little bit more about literacy. Last year, the Aponco teachers created and then piloted a K through four writing rubric, a way to assess um, 
student writing in the classroom and on uh, writing assessments. And after using it once or twice last year um, as a school, the grade level team thought they would be able to make it even more effective if they pegged it to the, each grade level. And um, this fall, they grades two, three, and four administered a common writing prompt, and this um, rubric proved to be very useful. And one more thing about data. You, I think I've told you that we're looking at looping to see whether we should bring it back to Pond Cove or not. Um, Sarah Safer and Pam Vos, at the request of the faculty, have done some, some gathering of data about teachers' perceptions of kids who have looped. We're also looking at the data we got when uh, kids looped before. And I have to say this, the level engagement of the Pond Cove staff has been very high. Uh, sometimes the back and forth conversations have been passionate and about ready to make a recommendation about that. At the school level of what Sarah Simmons called, C called CIA, Curriculum Instruction and Assessment, uh, we have, we're continuing to use the lesson study technique for teachers to think really deeply about uh, particular issues of curriculum in the context of long-term goals. So as I mentioned before, teams of teachers have planned a lesson together They've talked or drafted or urged one teacher to do it. Uh, the team has observed and taped the lesson. Then they uh, gather their thoughts and meet to debrief it. And someone else teaches the lesson. And to me, this is kind of a perfect match of the curriculum work we've been doing, which can be rather abstract and structural when you think about it, with the teacher's hold on their daily practice. Again, Tom was fortunate enough to uh, to join a conversation of a debriefing in grade four, and I, I think we're both very impressed at the level of involvement. Another ongoing project, the um, School Climate Committee at Pond Cove, which is, is still related to the K through 12 committee, has been meeting regularly to support communication and activities with the parents, and, uh, teachers, and students at Pond Cove. And as part of that, um, PCPA, I just wanted to mention, is sponsoring a book discussion group next Tuesday. The title of the book is Raising Children Who Think for Themselves, and I think this is in conjunction with the parent groups at the middle school and the high school. And uh, one more connection. Um, this Friday, a group of high school students and their chaperones from northern Japan will be at Pond Cove to do a traditional dance. They happen to be from a section of Japan, a city, in fact, that is about 50 miles from where I spent a week in the fall. Just, um, and that's how we made that connection. And just to let you know, coming up next month, a teacher from China will be joining Pond Cove as kind of an adjunct faculty member attached to the Allied Arts team to share her knowledge of uh, China's culture. Did I say Japan or China? China, uh, her knowledge of uh, Chinese culture with uh, Pond Cove staff and students. Another great opportunity for the Pond Cove community. Questions? Tom, yeah. um, this is really directed, I guess, towards everybody. It's not specifically for you, but I happened to catch a program the other night uh, on edu an educational program, and it mentioned that some people are doing research on how kids learn to read. Have you heard of anything, or has anybody heard about the reason I ask is, as you know, one of my favorite topics, allegedly there is now a screening, a uh, very short screening that can be given to kindergarten age kids, which is allegedly a reliable predictor of whether or not they will have difficulty learning. So um, we, it's, it's probably the, the phonemic awareness one, which is, anyway, um, we have, um, for the past couple of years had the opportunity to do a screening of entering first graders we do that with and we do something very similar with the kindergarten teachers and what happens is we we get to know those kids early and then they become um, the kids who need the help become part of the reading recovery process great yeah it's a very strong program Good. Okay. That's it. thank you now we can move on to the committee reports. Um, the Finance Committee, Elaine. Uh, finance Committee uh, is going to meet after this meeting. So there's no report. And Susan, the Policy Committee. Um, yes, the Policy Committee met on January 8th. And at that meeting, we began looking at some sample policies um, for the Code of Conduct 
that we've actually been talking about um, that I've reported about in previous meetings. And um, we kind of thought about how we were going to handle that. And we figured the process would work in that the policy committee would first review the sample policies that Tom's getting from, um, from the law firm that we're working with and also from uh, Maine School Management Association. Once the policy committee has looked at, at them and made um, suggested revisions, uh, those would go to a subgroup of the climate committee with um, some parents invited to join. And then um, kind of final look will be given by the district leadership team. And what we'll do then is put all the policies together in one block and present them after these groups have reviewed them for first reading um, to this board. Um, and at that last meeting, the, the initial policies that we looked at were the standards for ethical and responsible behavior, uh, kind of an introduction to a code of conduct, and um, policies around student discipline. So, and then tonight we'll be doing um, second reading on the four policies that you can see under unfinished business. Okay, do you want to move right into that, the second readings on those four policies? Sure. <clears throat> do I do that? <laughs> and do, do we vote on them separately? Yeah, I think so. And do we vote to approve them? Well, I have questions on a couple of them. I do too. Notes. Okay. How about um, on the first one, the policy adoption and amendment policy second reading? Any? Any questions on that? So, so do we vote to adopt it right now? Yes. Okay. All right. Do I run that? We need a motion. Okay. I move that we adopt the policy adoption and amendment policy. Okay. Second. In a second. Kevin? Um, any questions or comments on this policy? Um, all in favor? Six zero. Um, the next one, I move that we adopt the policy adoption and amendment procedures. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, a second. second. <coughs> Kevin? Um, questions or comments? I have a couple of questions. And actually, a couple of them are just typos. Right. In, oh, so you have that. Are under we, one. The under change. one, charged? Charged, right. Okay. And under three, just at a uh. space between at, uh. And my question is, in uh, number two and number three, where you say a regular meeting agenda shall include the first reading, is that a full school board meeting? A regular meeting. A regular meeting. So is that how we will refer to it as a regular meeting? As opposed school? to a workshop. But I mean a regular, does it need to say regular school board meeting? What is a regular meeting? Well, we could say school board, but right? I think we only have regular meetings and we have workshops. Okay. okay. But it sounds it, where it does say upon recommendation by the policy committee, a regular meeting agenda could reference the policy oh. committee. So it probably would help to clarify yeah, that. It certainly wouldn't hurt to clarify it. Okay. Um, so and that was in number two and number three in both places where it said regular meeting. Okay. So it would be regular school board meeting agenda. Okay. Okay. okay, so we can take a vote. All of those in favor? Six, zero. Okay. Um, the next policy is administration and policy absence. And I recommend that we approve that. I move that we approve that tonight. Um, second, Kevin. Any questions or comments? Um, I just have one comment. <laughs> As I was reading through this, I, these are like picky things. But where it says school committee, in every place it says school committee as opposed to school board, did we? We mentioned that last time, didn't yeah, we? we? OK, did. so we need to, it's a language from another. Right, because there are one, two, three, four, five places that then would need to be changed to school board. OK. OK. Um, so all in favor of adopting this? Six, zero. OK. And I move that we adopt the referral, pre-referral policy with the um, 
the change that we um, looked at last meeting for first reading. Okay, and a second, Kathy. Um, questions or comments? No comments. Um, all in favor? Six zero. Okay. So all four of those are adopted. Um, now we can move on to new business. And we have consideration of the superintendent's recommendation for athletic fee positions. Uh, there is one recommendation at the middle school for Ferusa Cherry uh, expansion boys basketball. Okay. Do we have a motion to accept, George? Uh, I would uh, move that we accept the superintendent's nomination for um, co-curricular or athletic fee position for uh, this winter. Okay, and a second. Susan, any questions or comments? None. All in favor? Six zero. Okay, and the next. And I'm recommending Heidi Kendrick um, for a co-curricular fee position at the high school in uh, drama and working with the uh, costuming area. Uh, do we have a motion for this? I'm so, Kathy? I move that we accept the recommendation of Heidi Kendrick. Okay, and a second? Susan? Questions or comments? Kevin? Just a question. Was this a, an interview by committee? I don't, I don't think for this position, no. Okay. okay. Anything else, Kevin? No? Okay, um, all in favor? Six zero. Okay. Um, and before we um, request to enter executive session, I would like to remind everyone of the upcoming meetings, which on Tuesday, January 21st, um, there is a, a joint town council school board workshop meeting. Um, which the building renovation package will be, be presented to the town council. On Tuesday, January 28th at 7 o'clock in the high school library school board workshop, um, which we will have an I-team presentation and we will work on the school budget for 2004. On Thursday, January 30th, again, a school board um, town council joint workshop meeting at 6.30 in the community center conference room, which will be preliminary budget discussions. On February 5th, Wednesday at 12 noon is the next policy subcommittee meeting in the William Jordan conference room. On February 11th at 6.30 in the William Jordan conference room, um, our next finance subcommittee followed by our school board meeting at 7.30. Um, and now if we can have a motion to... Uh, can I, finance Thank you. Oh, so we stay in public session then? Right. That's, well, okay. that's what I would suggest. Okay. Yes. okay. So, so we'll then we can we'll just... Journey to the Jordan campus for our finance committee. Okay. <laughs> to end. Okay. Is this, a is this one a dinner? I didn't understand that. Or no. Tuesday, we just, I guess we're just doing it. And it starts at 6.30, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. usually start. You're going to stay in public session that, to do the finance no. committee meeting, no. and then no. you will have to move. I don't know what to do about it. Oh, yeah, I think it is. So we're going to have finance committee meeting here. No.